just point out it's about three points. The first one is it's about globalization or anti-globalization and populism and so-called, some moderators said that the established intellectuals. And he defined that we are the uh, established intellectuals. I do not know whether he includes me or not, but it's anyway, that's, that's, a, that's a, it's the definition. The, I'd like to talk about the little, go back to the 1999 in Seattle. We had WTO conference. Bill Clinton wanted to launch the new round after the WTO itself was settled in 1994. With 400 arrested demonstration, as Eisenstein was so there, as I said, thank you, he said, under secretary, the completed mess. And uh, we failed to launch the round because of the anti-globalization movement, mainly sponsored by the NGOs or, and developing countries. Talking about all the new additional issue rather than trade and services, such as investment and so on. And at that time, what was just the biggest was is the mainly the government, including the United States, tried to re represent the support globalization on behalf of the globalizing companies. Globalization and internationalization is a little different. International companies respect more what to say local authorities and local rules. The global companies wants to keep their own global standard and push all the countries to accept such kind of global standard. That's a big difference between global companies and international companies or international standard itself. And a significant issue at that time, what we discussed is so-called investor state dispute settlement agreement, ISDS, that all the global companies can raise any kind of complaints or claim to the government directly, hosting government. This is the uh, new dimension at that time. But suddenly, if you, if you read a little bit about the article, USMCA, United States pulled out ISDS clause from the agreement between Canada and the United States. And at the same time, just one, one year before, the almost toward the end of the TPP, when the United States completely so finally pulled out, they said the one of the reason is because there is ISDS. ISDS itself is proposed by the United States on behalf of all the global companies, but finally they didn't. They, now they are coming back too. In that sense, the local local, uh, the, what you say, authorities or local rules. And I think that is one of the big phenomena what is going on. That is not the trade or trading services. Mainly that is more what you say, investment or some other agreement or regulations. That's one thing. The second point what I would like to raise is the uh, U.S. China. The many people that I, I, I was also asked many times in, in Japan, what is the impact of the US-China US trade war and so on. But I said, this is not the trade war. Actually, the war in hegemonial thing, or hegemony, in particular in the field of cyber, cyber technology or cyber 
space and so on. Okay, you can say that, for example, the quantum computing, internet, this you can pick up the, some of the cyber attack, or the, some kind of the cyber technologies, or the, some the, the uh, domestic intervention made by the cyber attack and so on, which is already said by the United States, it's the press, it's Vice President Pence, in addition to the uh, intellectual property rights issue, or the, somehow they were to say uh, bilateral trade issues, blah, 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 but real core part is not really the trade. That's the second point, what I like to say. And at that time, the maybe European Union's approach can be uh, appreciated when we are going to solve this kind of question in the cyberspace. It's one that's it's not completely, but a part of the solution is the GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, proposed by the European Union and many of the companies, including all the global GAFA companies, are, have to oblige with all that kind of the regulations. And that kind of stuff is maybe a good thing to do. The third point as well as I'd like to raise is the North Korea. As this a friend of mine, the <coughs> Don Johnson, the sister Johnson has already raised. The, I think the, for the time being, the real, what to say, uh, winner so far is Kim Jong-un. I think Trump is not making any the, uh, success in that sense. Even though he says that, well, he protected United States, or mainly it is the mainland US, by stopping all the, uh, what to say, threat of the nuclear bomb into the mainland. But the issue is, as Japan or some other neighboring countries or international community is raising about denuclearization issue. I don't think that will go. That is, there is no way to. At least when North Korea raised the issue about the peace treaty, the, I don't think the Western world is ready, in particular the United States ready to go into that kind of the peace treaty with the North Korea, including China and so on. And in that sense, the issue itself, as I said, it's that it's not moving. And why the Japan is not so much a concern? It's because the issue itself or the situation is not changed more than 30 years. Once North Korea started nuclear programs and so on, we are always under pressure and a threat with nuclear bomb and mid-range missile. US issue is ICBM. So for the time being, when the North Korea committed not to launch any ICBM, the United States can say that, or Trump can say that the uh, United States is completely safe. But Japan, Korea, some other neighboring countries are not safe enough. But I don't think, because of the players are different, it will not go on. And Japan is not really the main player in this uh, negotiation itself, I have to confess. So, well, as I, I just have a little to conclude, I think the, there was no way to go about North Korea. I'm pessimistic, but at the same time, as usual. Thank you very much.